Are deep fake political videos the ultimate threat in California's upcoming legislation to cure? Welcome to the funhouse mirror of modern democracy where reality is negotiable and your lying eyes and ears might actually be lying. Listen and ask yourself, can you spot the deep fake? Another trick is trying to sound black. I pretend to celebrate Kwanzaa, and in my speeches, I always do my best Barack Obama impression. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. Pretty easy, isn't it? Think that will impact the election like nobody can figure it out? And of course, Elon shared this Kamala video and says parody is legal in America, and that's the problem. People don't like Elon, and even Gavin Newsom responds to this and says, you know what? This kind of deep fake political content can't happen. And quote, I'll be signing a bill in a matter of weeks to make sure that it is. See, Gavin wants social platforms to identify and block deep fakes, and he's not alone. We gotta focus on the real problem with deep fake political content happening right now. And it's only being solved in one country by an ant. Auntie Mayu, that I'll show you later on in this video. Because what she is starting to solve doesn't come from the government or social platforms playing whack-a-mole with meaningless AI videos. Hey, I'm Declan Dunn, and I work with entrepreneurs, small businesses, and creative people to help AI work for them and help them. And in this episode, Deep Fake Political Mania, Regulatory Overkill or Free Speech, we're gonna look at this through the lens of you and I being able to use social platforms and not letting the deep fake political content mania get in the way of what's going on. So let's start by spotting the deep fakes. First up, let's spot the deep fake, a little quick interactive game. I'm going to show you some images in a video and you decide whether they're real or not if you're watching and if not, I'll describe them to you. Now, first up, of course, we have Donald Trump and here's an image of him with several black women in a photo. Looks very, very friendly. Now, is this a deep fake or not? Well, it turns out it is. And here's another photo where he's sitting with six black men. And it was done by right-wing Florida host, Mark Kay. He shows a smiling Trump embracing these happy black women. And on closer inspection, you see that they don't have some fingers and some have three arms, typical AI kind of stuff. But if you don't look, Maybe you think Trump is making those deals. And he says, quote, I'm not claiming it's accurate. I'm not a photojournalist. I'm not out there taking pictures of what's really happening. I'm a storyteller. Now, Color of Change has a different view. They see this as spreading disinformation and targeted intimidation of black voters. This is a serious issue. I'm not trying to dismiss it. But can we regulate it? The issue is, how do we prevent this and identify it without necessarily pushing it as California does. Let's look at a Trump video and play the game now. Listen to this. Is this at CPAC? Is this a real Trump or is this a fake Trump? Our enemies are <laughs> lunatics and maniacs. They cannot stand that they do not own me. I don't need them. I don't need anything about them. I don't need their money. They can. Well, that one's a little hard to guess, but that's actually <laughs> fake Trump. Now listen to the real CPAC video. Hey, when I'm in a news conference, people with these, these maniacs, these lunatics are screaming at me. They're just screaming like crazy. And you know, you take them and I love it. You know, it's like a mental challenge. It's... As you can see, that one is really subtle. But think about it, if a social media company is supposed to figure out which one's true or not, whether the image of Trump is true or not. So let's push it to Kamala Harris. Let's play the same game. Here's a picture of Kamala. She's dressed in bright red with a red hat, looking very much like this Chinese communist icon, communist Kamala. Well, obviously, you look at this and you know that if you're in anything in U.S. politics, this is not real. The Trump Organization put this out to make a point. Is this satire? Is this parody? Is this free speech? Interesting question. I can see both sides and can see how it'd be offensive. But let's now do the spot the deep fake test again. Watch this video by Kamala, and is it Kamala or deepfake Kamala? I was selected because I am the ultimate diversity hire. I'm both a woman and a person of color. So if you criticize anything I say, you're both sexist and racist. Okay, you guessed it right. Yes, that's deepfake Kamala. It's pretty not hard to figure out because 
those are not things she would say. And in fact, most of us in social media are very adept at figuring this out. It's not like news to us. But those videos, listen to the real comma. The freedom not just to get by, but get ahead. The freedom to be safe from gun violence. The freedom to make decisions about your own body. As you can hear, that video is obviously her, and we become pretty adept at social media to figuring that out. And while I'm not saying this isn't sort of a problem, how do we ultimately stop this without being censorship? And it's not limited to the U.S. I mean, check out this video. This is from India. That dancing guy looking like a rock star is an Indian politician. And this person is actually dead. A famous Indian politician who is no longer alive shown using a deep fake. And of course, there's the famous case of Keir Starmer, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Take a listen to what he supposedly said. Today I convened with police chiefs from across the nation to formulate a decisive strategy to address the scourge of white working class protests. These far right <laughs> have observed BLM riots and Islamic demonstrations and arrogantly assumed they could replicate them. Let me be unequivocally clear, you do have the right to protest in this country unless you are white and working class. Now there we have a problem. A racist sort of solution shown from the prime minister, but would, an, would a social platform be able to identify it? We'll talk about that in a second. Easy, right? Because they're techies, they can do anything. But what you do is leave free speech in the hands of people who honestly, I won't say they don't care, but if they do like Elon, at X, we're not sure the way they care is the way they sh that it should be done. After all, if you go to any site representing free speech, it's more like fringe speech. Look at Rumble or BitChute, which is really organic. All these sort of things that make us uncomfortable, conspiracies, some out there thinking, all needing protection of free speech, even though most people don't see it. See, free speech is not comfortable, but it's needed. And while deep fakes are taking things to another level, in the reaction to try to block this through some quasi big tech government agreement, it's just crazy. But the question you got to ask yourself, the problem of deep fakes is a serious problem, but is the solution to let government and social platforms be the arbiters of free speech? I mean, try asking AI if the images I showed you should be protected. You think it hallucinates when you ask it a question? Ask it about comedy, parody and satire. What do you think its answer is? I mean, is it comedy if they don't laugh, if AI doesn't laugh? And I've asked this question at Gemini, Claude, ChatGPT, and Midjourney, and all of them stop me from creating political content with real political people. You can get it done, but they're stopping that at the source. But what's happening is we're allowing this like billionaire social media owners and trillion dollar corporations joining forces to protect free speech by eliminating it entirely. Because nothing says open discourse like a soundproof echo chamber. It's beyond their capabilities, but that doesn't stop politicians like Gavin Newsom from pushing that responsibility to social platforms while pretending to regulate them. The deep state of deep fakes. California's farcical ploy into AI policing. Now, politicians have found a foolproof way to stop deep fakes. By making reality so absurd, no one can tell the difference. Take that, AI. Well, these deep fakes bother politicians more than social media users, and later on, I'm going to show you they're really not the problem. In an effort to save democracy, we're sort of deciding to kill it. But don't worry, we'll deep fake it later, right? We'll bring it back to life. Well, let's look at the California Defending Democracy from Deep Fake Deception Act of 2024. I mean, wow. Always these stunning titles that sound so good. But their plan is they want to stop deepfakes related to elections. It's overly broad, but it requires social platforms to remove deepfake videos 60 days before and 60 days after election. But who's going to police all of this? Even in the bill, they said, well, the social platforms have the technology and it bans the distri distribution of deceptive audio or visual media of candidates, leaving it and putting the liability on the social platforms when there's crazy people using AI and generating these images for fun, for laughter, for parody, and you're expecting that, that to tell the difference? Now, the good part is this act tries to protect voters from misleading content, but it's missing the point, and I'll share it later. Remember, Auntie Mayu, that's the solution. Strong legal accountability for tech platforms is great, but this is asking a lot. The censorship risks and burdensome for the platforms to implement. 
So even 18 states in the U.S. right now have deep fake regulations, and they're all over the board. California's law, which seeks to stop it and pushes it all to the social platforms. Texas, which is cr making it criminal to just create and disseminate election-related deep fakes. Oregon, Utah, and Michigan have passed laws relating to it, and there's lots of states with pending legislation looking at it. Even the U.S. federal government in the Deep Fakes Accountability Act is trying to outlaw deep fakes, especially those weaponized for elections, fraud or harassment. But it requires deep fakes to include clear permanent disclosures, which sort of is the opposite of what deep fakes do. And violators could face $150,000 fines or five years in prison. Those violators might include the social platforms. So it gives us a great legal framework, right? It gives heavy penalties, includes transparency tools, but again, in unintentionally limit free speech, satire and artistic creativity. Just like California says, oh no, we're not stopping parody or satire. How is this supposed to be filtered? How is that judgment rendered by tech? Thinking AI is magic? Take a look at people who don't understand this. And this could also impact the advancement of AI tech, trying to slow it down to 20th century government rules. Hey, in the EU, they've had the code of practice on disinformation since 2022. Demonetizing it, increasing political ad transparency, and strengthening cooperation between platforms and fact checkers. Great stuff. But platforms, again, have to improve their tools and better provide better access to data to the government. Now, a lot of people signed off of it. It's great on transparency and election integrity, gives cross-industry cooperation, and eliminates disinformation theoretically. But it's voluntary, there's no enforcement, and its effectiveness hinges on the platforms complying to these rules. And therein is the problem. They might even try, but can they do it? And are you putting this on 10 different companies to do it 10 different ways? Deep fake democracy, when pixels and politics collide. Now, let's say big tech can figure out a way to block this. California says the social platforms can do it. Push it off to them. After all, they're the techies. They do stuff we don't understand. And it's AI. After all, it's magic. Well, social media platforms are gaining what? Godlike powers of discernment? What is this? Black mirror or real life? Each platform would likely create more problems for its users than solving it. Talk about false positives. Facebook. Now with 100% accurate BS detection or your democracy back, guaranteed. And we saw this in the Mark Zuckerberg letter that he just sent to Jim Jordan, congressman, addressing the Hunter Biden Burisma story that he was forced to shut down in 2020. They received a warning, Meta did, from the FBI, and this was called potential Russian disinformation, even though it was an article in the New York Post. So they took the article down temporarily, Thing was fact-checked, and it turned out the report was not Russian disinformation, and Meta later acknowledged it should not have suppressed the article. In fact, some say Zuckerberg wrote this article in case Trump gets elected to sort of cover his back. But it's, this is an example of how pressure from political institutions can influence these powerful platforms, and this stopped an important article from being released prior to the election. So in a way, it was its own disinformation and election interference. This is the problem with government regulation of deep fake political content. We don't have the tools and censorship is never a game of really protecting us. It's always a game of power. So how do you expect nuance, humor or parody, judgment by AI that doesn't do nuance well? I mean, how do they know? And it even helps create what the Brookings Institute calls the liar's dividend. Deny a video you don't like and attack the ones you do. Either way you win. It doesn't even matter what the truth is. And this idea that there are algorithms and that social media is just hiding it and can just put this on misses the fact that there's 10 huge platforms at least, and each one would do it differently. And what we're trusting them with is defining what is true political content and what isn't. So as annoying as it is, is this really the problem? Well, it leads us to the great deep fake caper when AI meets the regulation radio. And the real problem isn't deep fake videos. It's the AI deep fakes you don't even know about because they aren't online. Robocalls, texts, and even posters. Should government decide who you should listen to or just block them online? 
even if they block them online, that's not really where AI is solving, is really causing the problem. But listen to this robocall and see if you think you can spot the deep fake. It's important that you save your vote for the November election. Voting this Tuesday only enables the Republicans in their quest to elect Donald Trump again. Now, no, that wasn't Joe Biden. This was actually a fake robocall that was done. That's where the AI gets really crazy. Not in online social media, which is where the focus and the clickbait and all the, woo, this is going to destroy us. Those weird videos I showed you are annoying. They're not good but they're not the source of the problem. That robocall going out to somebody who doesn't see Biden, but thinks it's him, is the problem. And how about this one? AI micro-targeting. AI tools to target customers by behavior, buying behavior. Even if they go to church, they take pictures of license plates that government and other organizations can buy from third parties. This is just being changed, but this is no conspiracy. It's been happening for years. That AI micro-targeting by email and text is super important to regulate. That has nothing to do with deepfake content videos. It's deepfake texts and really subversive targeting. So if you're going to try to stop the problem of AI effect on elections, you're going to see a lot more in the robocalls and the impact of email and texting to people, knowing their behaviors, knowing their triggers, knowing their psychological profiles really beyond a deep fake that's creepy that's cringe and finally if you think you think deep fakes are only online look at this poster from showing Kamala Harris a drawing of her in a Philadelphia Eagles helmet and the subtitle says official candidate of the Philadelphia Eagles with a link to the Philadelphia Eagles football website to vote now what's funny is no one knows right now as I'm recording this who put up those posters. They're on bus stops all over Philadelphia. And if you know Philadelphia, they love their Eagles, all right? They love their football players. And this looks like an endorsement of Kamala Harris. You want to talk about a deep fake? We don't even know who did it. It's in the real world. So you don't see that like the Kamala Harris video that's all over getting millions of views on Twitter. It makes us go, ah, the problem is right in the real world. So how are we going to stop that? penetration and the eagles have come out and said we obviously don't support this we don't support political candidates but if somebody walked by that would that matter that's the real threat of deep fakes way beyond what's online it's what's reaching us in the real world now i told you at the beginning that there's an ant solving the deep fake problem in taiwan and it was a little joke she's solving it but it comes from technology interested in protecting people and not enforcing more power now, Auntie Mayu is actually a chatbot from Taiwan and was created to stop political misinformation, mostly from China, government sources in Taiwanese media. It's focused on fake news and political deep fakes by offering real-time fact-checking. So the chatbot that you operate yourself as an individual leverages AI and in collaboration with civil service organizations to counter disinformation, particularly during elections. Its proactive approach helped reduce the spread of deepfakes by empowering users to quickly verify questionable content. So you get fast fact-checking, directly accessible to the public, limited to Taiwan, and it's reliant on users flagging content. But what's different is it's a real-time fact-checking model that's focusing on instant verification via a popular messaging app like we have WhatsApp. It's, theirs is called Line. And it's specifically tailored for Taiwan's disinformation challenges. While other systems like the EU's Code of Practice or U.S. deepfake laws emphasize platform regulation and long-term policies, Antimayu is user-centric and provides immediate on-demand fact-checking. Its localized approach gives us an edge in engagement, and it doesn't have the enforcement power, but what it does is it's in the hands of the users. So Antimayu is a much better solution then looking at every social platform. And what if that was something that was a cooperative, very pro society and done to train on the specific disinformation that we have in the US, Taiwan has, the European Union has, the UK has. The deep fake political survival guide. Here, I'll give you the three steps. Step one, trust nothing. Step two, question everything. Step three, realize you're probably a deep fake too. Now we need balance. 
deep fakes are dangerous. They do put out misinformation, but the regulatory attempts are trying to do this control play, which can't even scale because these the technology doesn't exist within each of these 10 private companies who also will be getting access to very private data, unlike Anti Mayu, which doesn't share the data with anyone. Maybe this is helping us get our critical thinking going. We're all talking about upskilling in AI and they always say, get your critical thinking out. Well, here it is. And I don't know anyone online in social media who inherently believes this stuff they see. It's just poking fun and getting the government to try to lead it in the battle between AI and bureaucracy, the only guaranteed loser, common sense. So the solution, a third party app like Anti Mayu dedicated to protecting the users, reversing the paradigm of being in the platform's control. Not part of the government, so they can make mistakes, not part of the social platforms who are really be afraid of liability, sharing the knowledge and not having it owned by a government, but trained to each country or culture. Imagine freedom, not just a speech, but from misguided regulation, silly solutions that pretend to apply a 20th century model to a 21st century problem that moves way faster than their old models of creating giant reports they don't even read and making grandiose statements that don't understand the technology. It's an evolution, not a way to restrict what we don't understand. So what do we need to do? We need to stop looking at the problem as deep fake political content that we can control and shut down. That won't solve it. The real thing is to create a third party application that works around it, works for the user, not for the social platforms. So to me, this is sort of a bluff and you wanna stop deep fake election fraud, stop misinformation, start by creating something that works for the user and not for a third party private business or a government whose real issue isn't free speech, but power. And free speech is important, as fringe as it may look, and we need to protect that, but we need to do that by starting with the people, not with those in power.